Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're going to talk about uh, the cocktail sort. Now the cocktail sort is a variation of the bubble sort and uh, it is a very interesting algorithm. It is obviously a stable sorting algorithm and as it is a variation of the bubble sort, it is a comparison sort. So it is, it compares two elements with each other and uh, you know, that's how it makes decisions to continue forward. Um, so here we have an array right we have this array now what exactly is going to happen uh, in the cocktail sort to you know solve this or or sort this so the first thing is that um in the bubble sort we basically have passes right passes so one pass second pass third pass in the first pass you know one element will be sorted or you know something like that where one element will be at the end at the front blah blah something like that so the first thing that we need to do is um you will execute a single pass of the bubble sort you know that is the first step of the cocktail sort but the second step of the cocktail sort is very interesting the second step is that you will basically uh, do that pass in reverse now what do i mean by that in the bubble sort what do you do you, you have the first element you compare it with the second element and swap if you know if they satisfy the conditions of your end um, you know ascended or descended ar array now in the cocktail sort once you do the first pass like that in the second pass you basically subtract uh, your uh, your end point from one and basically start from here going backwards and then you go forward again and then you go backward again and then you go forward again and then you go backward again until the entire array is sorted now that is how that is kind of interesting right so instead of doing just one sweep or one sweep throughout the entire array you do one sweep and then you do it again from the back and then you go from the front and then the back and the front and the back and then basically at the end the entire array is sorted so let's just uh, let's just take a look at the code and see how this is actually executed so the cocktail sort so we have this um, you know this th this uh, boolean over here called called swapped so is swapped is swapped is basically something that will check whether or not there was a swap that happened uh, in an actual pass now why is that important because if there is not a swap happening if a swap does not happen what does that imply it basically implies that there was nothing to be sorted a swap didn't happen so it is assumed that the entire array has been sorted so which is why that is there so um, next is the start and the end start and end are basically pointers of indexes so they basically point to the so the start obviously points to the start of the array and the end obviously points to the end of the array and as you can see we will manipulate these uh, pointers in a way where we can you know improve the efficiency of the algorithm so that we don't mess up so while is swapped is equal to equal to true don't worry about that uh, it, it basically means that while is swapped is true so as we discussed before um only when a swap actually occurs does it uh, allow the algorithm to go forward now if a swap does not occur it basically means that holy holy shit uh, there's the array is already sorted and you don't need to go through it again that's basically it okay um the next part is uh, is swapped is equal to false now we set is swapped equal to false immediately after checking it's it's true or not simply because uh if we set it if it's already true then this doesn't really do much then when you actually sort the array and you go through it line by line it, this doesn't actually make sense because it was already true so we make it false so that at the end if it's still false then you can just break out of the loop and then imagine like the and basically make sure that the array is already sorted now for i in range of start and end okay so for i in range of start to end basically a for loop which goes from start to end where i goes from the values of start to end if array of i is greater than array of i plus one basically you're checking two values which are next to each other adjacent to each other and if they are if they satisfy this condition which means greater than you swap them right so swapping in python is very simple you basically have this and and equal to and then you have comma this and then equal to this so it basically gives this value to this value and this value to this value it's very simple in python python is an awesome language don't worry about it you can execute this multiple ways you can even use a temporary variable if you want it's fine is swapped is equal to true so if a swap happens you basically make sure that is swapped is equal to true now if this condition was not executed right it means that the that 
the array is already sorted because it went through the entire thing and none of them satisfied your condition which basically means that the array is already sorted so if the array is sorted and is swapped as false it means you don't need to go forward right your thing is done so you can just break out of the loop but but in this case is swap is equal to true and then we basically reset is swap is equal to false because we want to check one more pass so one more time we need to check something that is uh, going backwards so we went front here we went front that is from zero to end now we need to go from end to basically front now what you do over here is you do end equal to n minus one now the reason you do this is because when you're when you run your bubble sort for the first time if you have ever observed a bubble sort or solved it on your own you always realize that the biggest number if you are obviously doing the ascended sort always ends up at the end it always ends up at the end always whenever you do it, it always ends up at the end which is exactly what is happening over here now when you do the first pass you're going from front to back which means it's gonna the biggest element in this case whatever it is i mean i think it's 63 or something or sorry 84 this will basically end up at the end which means that you don't have to check for it again you don't have to check for it again so you can do something like n equal to n minus one so that you basically uh, put a barrier and say okay this is already sorted i don't need to go back i don't need to go back over there okay done that's as simple as that and as you can see we go from for i in range of n minus one to start minus one and minus one so what does this mean this basically means in python that you're running a for loop which goes from n minus one so what is n minus one in this case n minus one will be if you're doing it for the first time it'll be 63 that is a sorry a zero one two three four five six seven eight nine it'll be nine so you're going from nine the value nine to start of i minus uh, start minus one so the biggest thing you need to uh, remember in this is the range function right it includes the first value and excludes the second value what, what does that mean it means that this value this uh, range is basically going from end end is bigger than start so it's basically going backwards it's going negative so this is similar to going nine eight seven six five four three two one and then start is supposed to be zero initially and you go zero minus one minus one right so minus one base it basically means that this minus one value is never reached it's never actually actualized it basically is like okay you can't go beyond this or or you can't even reach over here which is minus one is unattainable it only goes from uh, nine to zero and that's why you always have a value that is one bigger so that you know where to stop you can read more about this in the python documentation it's very straightforward and minus one is basically the incrementer um, there is no automatic range function where you always subtract one so you have to add this as a incrementer this is the, the decker or you can say it is the decrementer instead of the incrementer and so on and so forth then you do the same thing you check whether uh, you know they satisfy your um, your you know conditions to make an ascended array and if they do you swap them and if they swap you know the drill uh, is swap is equal to true and then what happens is now that you're moving from back to front the smallest element is now put in place right the smallest element is now put in place that so you don't have to start from the start again you, just, you can basically change the value of start and say start is equal to start plus one and then eventually you'll go up, come over here and then you'll come over here and then you'll come over here and then you'll sort only two values and that will be it and that's how this algorithm basically works now I'll just run this one time and show you how it runs Control j i'll just do this right click and run python file and then you're like okay cool it works um so that's for the cocktail sort it's it's a very straightforward algorithm it's not that complicated it's just a modified version of the bubble sort so um thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next video please like share and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this i will see you in the next video